George. Uh, welcome everybody to the Thursday, March 10th, Town of Monroe Planning Board Workshop meeting. Bonnie Franson. Jason Sorinsky. Here. Jeff Manson. Here. Pat Shea is out. And Nicholas Napoli. Uh, Napoli. Napoli. I, I apologize. <laughs> Good now? Better? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, thank you. I'd like to pull in the fire exit. That, let's please. So we would uh, just like to, as an agenda item, uh, acknowledge Lisa McQuaid as a board member. She was here with us uh, for some time, uh, you know, appeared at, here with the board at the meetings, helped us make decisions, uh, and we wanted to thank her for her service. So I just wanted to publicly acknowledge um, Lisa and her uh, participation on the planning board. Uh, with that, I'd also like to uh, welcome our new planning board member, uh, Nick Napoli. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, anything you want to share in terms of uh, how long have you been here in Monroe now? Uh, been about five years. Okay. Five, six years. Uh, me, my wife, and my. have to watch it be red and then we, you know you're on. There we go. <laughs> Me and my wife and my two girls. I uh, live in Monroe for about five, six years now. And uh, just loving it up here. Made the change from Long Island, so it's a different world. And uh, I want to keep it the way it is. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place to raise a family. So. Well, thank you. And we uh, look forward to your contributions here on the board. Thank you. Thank you. So the first item on the agenda is Dominic Santiago. Welcome. This is also referred to as 339 mixed use building. All right, uh, Dave, why don't you give us an overview of where we are and a little bit of the history uh, about the project again? Absolutely. So, back here. <laughs> back here before the. Your little microphone on there muted. Is there, a, is there a dot by where it has the slash through the microphone? There, how's, oh. how's that? That's good. Thank you. I didn't think my words were that <laughs> important. I could, and, it could and, it, be. and again, the purpose is just because Noreen ultimately has to create minutes mm -hmm. and she relies on the recording. So we try to have this uh, you know, within the microphone system to the extent we can. Absolutely. Thanks. I that. So we... Uh, uh, in response to our last submission regarding this project, uh, we had to alter the design and mend it uh, in response to the previous comments that we had received from the engineering firm. Uh, again, this uh, building maintains its mixed use application. It'll be retail on the first floor, offices on the second floor. 
but yet due to the zoning requirements regarding parking in the front yard, we altered the design to have directional parking around the three sides of the building and uh, with 24-foot uh, emergency vehicle access along the front of the building that would access onto Route 17M. It actually evolved into a, a nicer design to a certain extent with the directional uh, traffic and parking along the three sides. The building uh, footprint and ultimate area square footage is basically the same. It did alter somewhat. Uh, the, um, The makeup of the building hasn't changed, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, uh, we received the comments from Magui House and Netzel from Sean and had an opportunity to review them prior to the meeting, which we appreciate very much and are in a position right now to definitely address some of the matters so we can continue on with the project. Give everyone a sense of where this is uh, along 17M. Actually, it's interesting in this picture, you could see this overflow issue um, that's been a problem for some time. Uh, I know they were out there again trying to repair it. I don't know if the OT is actually working in that area, um, something we need to look into, but this, this got kind of blown out again more but, recently. And yes, I mean, it provides further evidence underground pipe and bringing it to the existing uh, basin will help this quite a bit because it won't be an open swale anymore. It'll be s enclosed within a pipe property and out. So with that, I think first we'll uh, ask our engineer if he has any comments and we ask our attorney and then we'll have uh, any planning board comments um, after that. So Sean, do you want to begin? Yep. So the application previously, at the last time it was before the board, uh, the square footage of the building was approximately 8,400 square feet. That's been reduced to 7,850. Uh, half of that being you know, retail on the first and um, office on the second, as Mr. Namako noted. Um, I did note a couple um, sections of the code uh, that are specific to this application since it's in the GB district, but the SR15 is immediately behind. There's some screening requirements as well as a hard setback requirements. Um, and uh, the GB district has 65% lot coverage, uh, maximum allowable. So I just ask that a calculation be provided since it's noted right at 65% currently. So I just wanted to confirm that, you know, if the applicant could, could do an analysis of that percentage. Um, so for the parking calculation, currently what's proposed is, um, so I can be more accurate, I'll quote right. Drawing. The required parking uh, is calculated at 21.67 for retail and 16.25 for office. Um, those were not rounded prior to adding the two, uh, but instead the decimals were included to be added. So essentially, um, 38 is currently what's noted as required. However, Ashley did uh, reach out to Ben, and it's my understanding that each of the retail space and the office would have to be rounded prior to adding the two together. So that would create an, an additional required space. Um, and I'm sorry if I still hear thunder with that. <laughs> I agree. So 39. Right. 39. Correct. Um, uh, I noted another requirement with regards to parking in the GB. Since there's over 30 parking spaces required, there's additional landscape uh, requirements. Um, then moving to grading, there are significant retaining walls proposed on the western, southern, and eastern sides of the building. Wall does get quite tall in areas, nearly 15 feet. Um, so I uh, noted some concerns with the proposed drainage pipe that it, I'm not sure, I think the applicant should do a 
profile of the drainage pipe to confirm whether or not it's either proposed through the retaining wall or to, or to make sure that it is under. Uh, and then uh, with that drainage pipe, I just asked for so, a little bit more analysis um, for that pipe. The applicant provided a hydraulic analysis using Manning's equation. However, that gener Manning's equation is generally used for a bit smaller or flatter slopes. So I just asked that a, a more detailed analysis be prepared for that. Um, And uh, just a couple more cleanup items on the plans uh, with regards to setbacks. And uh, the applicant did pre uh, prepare a um, profile for the roadway all the way around, or the, the driveway really, around the, the lot. There were a couple locations where the grade was noted greater than 10%, so I just stated that that was a concern. It regrade the property to get that below 10, uh, I think would be uh, better for the for the application so thing that is different is uh, previously it was noted to that the uh, building would receive potable water from the village of Harriman that's been changed to a, a portable well for the site um, I, I didn't know if that came because of discussions with the village or why that was brought about uh, that has been an <laughs> I have to say, we have discussed the water concerns or access to municipal water with all of the surrounding municipalities, Harriman, Monroe, Village of Monroe. There is no accessible water, uh, there is no municipal water accessible to the site, so we do have to uh, provide a well system. Okay. And I do know that you're working with DOT on access and the modifications within the right of way, correct? Well, actually, we have not heard from DOT yet, so I'm hoping the plans were referred to them. <coughs> I believe they were. I'll double check when I get back to the office. Okay, that would be great, because we're, we're definitely looking forward to their response and comments so that we can continue with that process. Um, you know, uh, we again had opportunity to look at Sean's comments, and for the most part, we agree with with all of them. Uh, we do have some uh, replies that I'd like to share with the board tonight, so that we do move in a linear direction. Uh, the comments regarding the uh, retaining wall along the west side of the property can be addressed. Uh, uh, we can move that retaining wall a little further away from the property line so that if a modular wall is to be maintained, we will have enough space for a geogrid at that point. Uh, the access along the west side of the property, it goes from 17 feet to almost 25 feet on the south side. Uh, the, uh, the aisle actually increases because we tried to maintain a 90 degree relationship between the parking and the building. So if we skew the retaining wall away from the property line by still, but still maintain a 16-foot access lane, uh, that would allow us to have room for the geogrid in that location. So that's one of our solutions, or one of the things that we would be looking to do. In addition to that, uh, we did note the landscaping along the south side of the property. Uh, we do have a slope there, so we'll investigate further on how to maintain a, vegeta uh, a landscaped area along that south side to buffer this project from the surrounding residential neighborhood or residential houses. Right? Uh, I believe it was an eight-foot uh, diameter uh, landscape tree that needed to be provided or trees <coughs> along that area. So eight-foot eight wide buffer an eight foot wide buffer. Right. So the buffer could be ve uh, just vegetated in its traditional sense, or just, it's an eight foot buffer of? So it says, uh, uh, excuse me, a six foot minimum uh, wide planting strip situated with, uh, within the required rear yard with suitable evergreen plant material of not less than eight foot for an effective natural screening. So eight foot in height and six foot wide. Eight foot in height. All right. 
and six foot wide. Okay, we're, we're prepared to address that. Um, appreciated Sean's thoughts regarding the lock coverage and confirming uh, the 65% zoning code requirement. He also provided us, it's good to have friends, right? He also provided us a way to confirm that with the 5% vegetation that's needed within, or landscape area that's needed within the parking. That actually turns out to, uh, within the parking area, that actually turns out to be about 670 square feet. We can provide that in the islands that are shown striped along here, and actually that will help us in our lot coverage and definitely uh, allow us to confirm that we'll be below the 65%. In addressing the additional parking space, one thing I did want to present to the board and to get your input, uh, right now we show it in the southwest corner of the property. Uh, the dumpster location works well there. Uh, yet, if I can relocate that to the northeast portion of the property uh, by the parking area there and, and surround it with vegetation, that would allow us to have the additional parking space that's required. And we, we could place it where the dumpster is shown right now and relocate that dumpster to, again, that <coughs> eastern portion, northeast portion of the property by the parking. Offers an solution? Oh, this is, this is getting even better, right? Okay. So, um, the two handicap stalls that are, they can share that middle aisle per ADA. Um, and instead of having the second um, striped area reserved for no parking, perhaps that could be a standard parking space. Absolutely. Uh, it was my understanding that we used the area that my understanding that the ADA code had changed where it needed two areas of discharge for the vehicles. But if we can eliminate one, that would be fantastic. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll further research that and, and eliminate the spot if, if that's allowed. The um, one. In addition to that, one clarification uh, that we would request is regarding item seven and then uh, regarding the rail above on the retaining wall or fence detail. So right now we show a railing across the top of the retaining wall, but yet uh, a reference is made to a fence detail. So uh, uh, we can do either, you know, whatever the board wants or whatever the code requires. Um, just let us know your it is going to be a when it's slotted with a green uh, barrier or something like that or well, I think whatever we want will want to be attractive sure. and we do have architectural review Sure. over the building and, and the site. So um, I think whatever we're proposing, whether it's retaining walls, et cetera, um, we'd want it to be um, architecturally enhanced. So could we eliminate the rail from the wall and replace it? Um, I'm gonna defer to Sean and, and also maybe Ben because I don't know if there's a code requirement for certain types of fencing along retaining walls. My, my understanding is wherever there's a 30 inch or greater drop, a barrier is required. And I believe that's 36 inches high. So whether it's a, a rail or a fence. There is, has to be some. There has to be something. Which we agree, that's why we showed a railing. But yet we could eliminate the railing and provide a fence detail. We're asking the board for your thoughts. Yeah, I think, I think we'll think about it. Um, let's think about some options. Um, because I don't know that that's going to, you know, hold things up per se. You know, we can we can look at options, or maybe you can even give us design options at some point. Can I just ask a question in relation to that? Sure. When you're looking uphill from the property, Dave, where beyond what will be the top of the retaining wall, and beyond the property line, what's back there? What what would we be? If, if it was a railing, that would be more visible. What would we be looking at? 
Is it wooded back there? Uh, are there other buildings back there? So there, he's required to put a, a landscape buffer in between. So hopefully it will just be the buffer <laughs> that you see. Oh, okay. So one way or the other, the, it's going to be screened. It's going to be, yes. Okay. So it's a, again, it, uh, it's a uh, six foot wide buffer with eight foot high trees along that buffer, which I would, a I would ask, I don't know if the board has jurisdiction to do so, but I would ask for some relief from the height of the trees since the wall is so high anyway. Um, I, I, I actually, I think the landscaping barrier lower in height would serve more of a purpose than an in increase. In height, but I, I'm again. I'm not sure if the board has jurisdiction or could allow that to happen. The building itself, uh, 35 feet. But it'll be less because of the way the property slopes. So the first mm -hmm. floor cuts into the earth. I'm just wondering from 17, how much you're really going to see of the retaining wall, of the screening back there. For for customers of the offices and the retail space, and they come into the parking lot, they certainly will, but... It won't be seen. I would think, for the most part, the building is going to be blocking that area from the general public. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm picturing this right. Absolutely. Comments, Sean? Not at this time. Rick, do you have comments? I have a few. Um, one is that um, the you had sent out the notice of intent to be lead agency. Um, haven't seen anything that there were any objections. Um, on the bulk table, um, the required rear yard is 50 feet, and that needs to be noted on your bulk table. Talked about moving the dumpster, um, but where it is right now, um, the notation as to it doesn't really match up. You have a dumpster and then the arrow goes someplace else. It doesn't go to the dumpster. So just clean that up when, uh, if you either keep it there or move it someplace else. Um, with respect to the planting buffer, um, I'd have to look further at whether or not the planning board has any leeway with respect to the height, but certainly as to the specific language, it's not less than eight feet in height so as to provide an effective buffer. So unless there is some general provision dealing elsewhere, the statute itself on the landscaping would not provide any uh, ability to have any relief from the planning board. That would have parcel viewer shows um, the owner is Dominic Santiago, and I understand that you provided a deed, but the deed didn't indicate that it was actually filed. So if you could uh, submit some proof saying that the deed was filed. Uh, normally when you file that deed, it gets a little receipt from the county clerk's office, so that's usually whoever filed it should have that. Uh, Bonnie had noted uh, earlier is that this board has architectural review, so at some point in time you're going to be submitting your architectural review as to uh, the building. Rick, that we can do. Sure you can. That, that we, we can handle that one. Um, I also have a note here from Ashley that you need to show the limits of disturbance um, for the tree plan and all trees being removed under um, Chapter 57, Article 20. Sets forth the specific requirements in that regard. And those are all the comments I had. Uh, 
Uh, so with that, uh, we'll take any of the planning board members' comments. Uh, I'll start on this side. Jason, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, I had a question about the lights on the southwest side of the property along that retaining wall. Would, are those built into the wall or are they standalone like street lights kind of deal? Because from the detail, it looks like a street light, but a really small street light. Uh, that is uh, something that we were hoping to work within the um, the retaining wall. Okay, so then on, on that note, my last bit on that would be to put a more downward shield just because the behind the property is zoned residential and to just kind of mitigate some of the, any light that might come up from those lights into the backyard of the people or on the land now and former Sullivan. Um, I think a downward shield would help mitigate that as well. And last time, I believe we there was a conversation about using impervious or surface cover. Permeable paper. There we go. That's the word. <laughs> um, and I saw we were sort of on the borderline with 65% with the permeable pavers. Are we still at 65% or is that been t removed from the equation here? Excellent question. And they have been removed. We south retain further away from the property than a previous design. Then also it's clipped at the um, southeast corner uh, and that allowed less coverage. Uh, so we, we, first of all, we can't use the permeable pavers anyway, uh, according to the code, but in addition to that, we don't need them anymore. And I remember from the last time we had a little conversation about the parking layout, and I'm glad you went with the directional way. And last topic on parking, did you have any sort, did the owner have any sort of tenants in mind as to how that parking would work? Because various retail operations and office functions have different, they have different demands, parking demands. I, I to, the, to the end of my knowledge, it's just going to be conventional. Um, Oxen? Exactly. You know, office hours, you know, from 8 to 5, 8 to 6. Uh, store hours, I would imagine 9 to 8, 9 to 9, something like that. That was it for me. Do you have any comments? A couple of things. The size of the building has been reduced once or perhaps twice from the original concept. And I know, I believe in the last iteration, uh, the conversation was five retail units and then five office spaces. With the reduction to this plan, is it still five and five being proposed, you thinking? Uh, or? I'm th well, you know, it depends what the market can bear because we still maintain a 60-foot length along the front. That could equate to four 15-foot wide retail units. Um, so that might remain in effect, or it could go to three 20-foot wide units, uh, again, depending on what the market would bear. For the offices above, uh, that probably will maintain a, a sweet kind of condition. Uh, with surrounding wall within what I'm wondering too is with the removal of the parking in the front will will the primary entrances to the building be facing 17 or will they be really facing into the parking you for lack of a better term retail us uh, Entrances will be facing 17M. The office entrances will be on the south side of the building, especially si since the land, the drive slopes up and around in the back. So the again, the office entrances will be on the south side, facing the retaining wall. And in the lighting detail, um, for both units, the the units on the uh, wall and in the parking lot, there's a notation. The hours of operation of the site are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., five days per week. The lights on site shall be used as required only during these hours. Uh, so is a suggestion that after 6 p.m., 
and on the weekends, those lights will be dark at all times? Yeah, that's, that's probably an oversight on our part. Uh, we would definitely want lighting during dusk and at nighttime, so we'll have to mend those hours accordingly. You know, the lights would not be needed during the day. Well, I'm just thinking, too, from a security standpoint. Maybe you don't need all the lighting all night long, but um, for retail storefronts, there's got to be some lighting. The, the police have to have the ability as they're driving by to take a, a peek at what's going on around the building, that sort of thing, the property owners. So I, I would just, just in relation to my own business, I was thinking about that. I think that's everything I, I got. I can appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, do you have these files? <laughs> have you <laughs> had a chance to take a look at it? Or not yet? Oh, no, not yet. Okay. All right. Uh, we need to make sure we get those to Nick so he can take a look. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I have some questions. So... One is I think that with regard to any of the drainage design going on, I think this has to be reviewed by DOT because this is such a problem. Um, again, that area just gets blown out um, regularly with the heavy storm and they keep trying to repair it. I know they've been down there or I've seen some activity, but I'm not sure if it was in this location. So I think whatever's done definitely has to be um, worked out with them. With regard to net lot area, um, were there steep slopes of a uh, grade that had to be netted out or not? Or did they already? They, they didn't provide that calculation, but yes, over 30% would have to be netted out. Okay, so for our minimum lot area, we have to net out steep slopes. So we need to do that calculation and see where we are um, on your bulk table. I suspect you have the because it's, I think 10,000 is the minimum lot area, so you probably have it. Was 10,000 the minimum? Yeah, 10,000. Yeah, so I don't, and your lot is closer to 32,000, so I don't envision that'll be an issue, but we need to net out steep slopes. 30%? Yeah, and, and I think we also have to look at the purposes section because the intent was not to do a lot of grading on steep slopes, but to have terrain adaptive and protect certain features, so we're gonna consider that as we look at the application, um, because there's a lot of grading and retaining walls going in. Um, when you talked about the geo grid, what, what does that look like? If I'm looking at the face, is the geo grid similar to, you know where the senior housing is now in the village? Um, is that geo grid? No, so geo grid is a structural component of the retaining walls, so as, um, as a retaining wall, a modular retaining wall is laid down, there's a horizontal fabric or grid that's laid with it and it's submerged underground. And it depends on the manufacturer, but it's done at different intervals to, to use to hold the wall back from allowing the earth to push it over. Okay, so it's structural. And can this geo grid be faced attractively with? It's hidden in a, it's buried. So the geo grid is hidden in the ground. But, so what's the, what, I'm not understanding, what is the retaining wall itself? Well, the retaining wall will have a textured face to it. So okay. depending on, so we, we specified a terracrete a modular wall. It has a, an undulating texture to the face of it. And uh, so that it's not just a plain face block. But it example. has some kind of like stone appearance to it or architectural appearance. So the geo grid is different from the retaining wall, or they're like linked somehow. They're integral. Okay. So uh, if this is the earth here, and here's the earth here, mm -hmm. and this is the retaining wall, the geo grid is hidden underground. Okay. And it, to hold to hold the uh, retaining wall in place. Okay. So you have the geo grid, but that's attached to the retaining wall, or or component of the retaining wall, but the retaining wall can be can still be surfaced architecturally. Right. Okay. Um, oh, we would want Karen Arndt to take a look at any landscaping. So I sent her the plan. However, the landscape plan had a, had a chart identifying, I think, nine shrubs. However, they weren't located actually on the plan. So 
I, I provided it to her just to give feedback on the species choice, so. Um, so with regard to this drainage, this looks like it's an outlet to a pond that sits above um, this stream, swale, whatever it is. And I would want to make sure that it doesn't actually have wetland vegetation, that it's not a wetland stream, um, because we keep calling it a swale, but it is an outlet to a pond. And so the pond was probably dammed at some point, and then this is the outfall to it. So um, I would ask that Dave go out there and take a look at it. Let's realize the relationship between the pond and this drainage swale. I mean, the pond is far away, you know, from, from the swale. And it's not, and this swale is not the only outlet uh, you know, of the pond. It's just one of many. So um, uh, I'm not sure what type of classification you would give the swale regarding a wetlands habitation or wetlands vegetation. I don't know that there is. It's just a question whether the stream is in some way regulated because this is showing up on the NWI maps as a wetland, the pond. And then you could see this is the outlet here. Yes. Going right through, that's the property, correct? Yes. So that is the stream. That's the outlet to this pond. And my question is, is this actually natural drainage? I don't know if it's natural. It could have been man-made. So we just need to check and see if it, in fact, is regulated in any way from an Army Corps perspective. That's why I'm asking the question. So who's Dave? Uh, Dave Tompkins is oh. the wetland person that we okay, use. Okay, so you're going to refer to him? Yes. Um, at some point, we'll get a design for the building. I don't think we've seen a design yet. Oh. I know we're still working through the site plan, so. Actually, I mean, I think the site plan is at a point where it will probably remain in this form in one case or another. So we feel comfortable about going into the architectural phase and provide the renderings associated with it. That's the fun part. Or an architect. <laughs> <laughs> um, the handicap spaces, and this is just a general question, are angled the handicap spaces allowed? Is that tip, I mean, is this the design or is this acceptable for handicap? For handicap, yeah, I, spaces. I'm not aware disabled. of any any pro prohibition for angled parking for handicap. Okay, but, but I can look into that. Yeah, just I, uh, it, it's allowed. Okay, yeah, yeah I just want to make sure that the dimensions are are accurate. The, as far as as far as the angles. Um, in looking at so this is going to be one way circulation. So we'll need to have details on any signage that's needed to make sure that it's one way, that people know that's going to be one way if the details aren't on the plans yet. Um, do, we need, do we need a loading facility? Because if this is retail on the bottom um, and even office supplies, there needs to be a location for loading. So I would just ask where that could occur and we need to show it um, on, the, on the property. That point, it's not required by by zoning, but I think it's a good point that you know there needs to be some location for the retail space to be able to load have for we, deliveries. Yeah, oh. have we referred this to the fire department? Not yet. Okay, so I think they're going to need to look at that too. Uh, so I'm um, I'm looking at the circulation specifically. So so I mean there will be delivery trucks. There'll be FedEx vans. You know those are you know, that those size aren't an issue. But if you get a box truck coming in to do drop-off supplies because we don't know who the tenants are going to be, I don't expect the tractor trailer, but I expect maybe a box truck here and there possibly. Do we have, does this circulation system allow for that size scale truck? And um, is there a place where they could drop off if they were unloading? Well. It's a temporary condition, so the, the front roadway across the north side of the project is 24 feet wide. I mean, it, uh, a truck can definitely stop in front of one of those retail stores on, and unload or load quite easily. Um, and it wouldn't even interfere with any parking spaces or any uh, customers because parking's not allowed along the front. 
so I, I think that would satisfy the retail space as well. And then for the offices, I mean, we're not talking about a huge impact, uh, as I agree. I think it's more the retail, that, that again, because it's retail. So, and I think for the temporary application of those technologies, a front drive satisfies the requirement. I, I, th I guess I would ask, is there enough space to stripe a loading area in the front there, if we could look at that, sure. just identify it as a potential loading area? Um, I just want to make sure that also vehicles can circulate around and back in and back out. Uh, the two spaces that are at the southeast corner, um, getting out of that one space that's getting out of the one space that's next to the well, that feels a little awkward given the fact that it's one way circulation. So if we could just take a look if that space is going to work. That would be the north or the south? Southeast. By the well, I yes, by the well, because he's going to back out like this, I guess. Just it feels a little awkward where it is, so I'd like to see whether or not um, that that's, that works from a vehicle maneuvering perspective, from a you know turning out and then going the one way. So maybe Sean, you could take a look at that. I mean, the island there, which is now going to become vegetated because of the requirement regarding the five percent, definitely allows enough room for a car to to move in and out. I, I mean, I've seen this application and other commercial spaces within the area, so I'm not seeing it as a, a hindrance for parking or, or backing out and continuing. What are the length, length of those marked spaces? Well, they have to be 18 feet long, but they're even longer because they're angled. I, I was gonna say, they're yeah, supposed to be longer, right? Exactly. Do we know what they are? I, um, I don't have the detail page with me, but I think on the detail page we provide some dimensions associated with it. If not, we can definitely provide it by the next meeting. Right, because I think 18 would be too short for this bright, for the curbing. Perpendicular. The space itself is, eight, I mean, accommodates a nine. That. Um, does the potential exist, there are some so the areas that have sort of, I don't know if they're dots, those are land, are those going to be little landscape beds? Uh, well, the, the... And then you have striped areas. The striped areas were, a, at the time of this submission, were intended to be striped areas. Yet, as a result of the comments that we received uh, tonight regarding 5% of, of the parking area to be landscape, I would say the majority of those striped areas are now going to become vegetated, which would be the same graphic as the, um, you know, the islands shown to the northwest of the property, that dotted grass uh, fill graphic. Okay, so you'll make them large enough to be able to handle a tree or some shrubs or something. Actually, they're, they're large enough now. I mean, to give you an example, uh, see the, the two islands at the entrance, um, as you come into the property and you first encounter the angle parking. Uh, the one to the west is 117 square feet. The one to the east is 142 square feet. So it's, it's, they're substantial islands. And now that they'll become vegetated, they'll uh, stand out. You know, we're hoping that the one to the west, well, in, in this design right now, uh, it's shown as a continuous fit. Uh, vegetated area, but um, oh no, we do show. I'm sorry, we show it as a vegetated area. My mistake. I withdraw that. It's good. <laughs> um, that turn. So as you're going northbound along the east side of the building, um, you have the striped area, which you're going to change to a landscaped area. Um, but it looks kind of sharp to me in terms of there, there should be enough room, but just to check that turning radius in there. 
And you know, getting back to those two spaces, the re reason I asked about it was, again, when they're backing out, you have a space next to the building by that sidewalk. So it was more just, you know, making sure they're maneuvering at an angle and do they have enough room for an angle because of that one space that's there at the end of that sidewalk where the six spaces are. So if, if we could take a look at that, if there's enough room. Absolutely. Um, talked about loading. The project or the, the site plan talks about a rubber wheel stop. Is it, should it be rubber or concrete? Does it, I mean, I don't, well, I'm not okay. familiar with rubber usually. It's, I see usually concrete. Yeah, they, I've seen rubber wheel stops before. I, I think that's really a board's preference, whether you, you'd prefer to see the rubber or the concrete. Yeah, I, aren't, are concrete less likely to be moved if plowed, or is there one that's better for plowing? So the rubber ones you can spike just like you can a concrete one, so there's holes that you can drive through the pavement so it locks it in place. Okay. So. Have you seen that used a lot? Because I've seen mostly concrete. I don't really... Have I seen it used a lot? Probably not, but I've seen it. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll look at that. I was just curious. I, um, a thought process associated with the rubberized wheel stops is the fact that you're actually heading towards a retaining wall. So you have a... I, I usually... Well... One thought could be using a concrete barrier or a concrete wheel stop would be good uh, to stop a car. But here you have definitely you have a retaining wall and um, the rubberized wheel stops are really just to stop the car from hitting the, the retaining wall, not to go off an embankment or to go off a... Right. I think we also don't want them hitting the retaining wall either though. Well, <laughs> In that case, the in, in that case, the overhang of the front of the car is going to go way beyond the concrete wheel stop, and it'll hit the wall anyway. So, well, so that's that's a point that this has to be the the wheel stops have to be set back enough to allow the overhang to happen. So we need to make sure that those spaces are long enough to accommodate the car, and make sure that the wheel stops are such that, again, they're not going to hit the retaining wall. So if we could take a look at that dimension. Um, uh, L are we using LEDs, and are they 3,000 or less Kelvin? Okay. Well, so the well right now is located next to the stream. And I don't know if there's a separation distance, but it may not matter because it may or may not be piped. Would that, does a well have to be a certain distance from a stream? There would be a requirement, but my understanding environmental resource technically a stream. Um, that's something we could look at. Yeah, I think um, if it doesn't come up on the environmental resource mapper, it's just it might be a lower level stream. They don't map all the streams. Okay. So I think we need to just check if that's actually a stream. But I don't know that's going to matter if this ends up being piped. So that's just a, that's just a general question, whether right. that distance matters if there's a pipe. Likely not. Um, there would be a separation distance between the well line feeding the building and the, and the drainage pipe that's proposed. So a vertical separation since they cross. But again, it, our intent encapsulate that. Uh, I looked at the EAF, but that's, we've already done our NOI. Um, those were my comments. A general question with regard to the study, piping, sizing, et cetera. Um, does, does, I know in New York State, certain things have to be done by engineers. With doing piping and calculations, does it matter if an architect or an engineer does that? I don't know if there's any requirements. I was just asking the question. Um, it's our understanding New York State educational law allows a licensed architect, engineer, or surveyor to do site planning and site design. So. Um, 
I, there's nothing I know of that prohibits us from doing so. Okay. Anything to the commentary? Okay. Yeah, no, I just, I was curious. <laughs> no, because I know, for instance, when, I think when you set up like a sewer district <laughs> or a water district, it has to be stamped by an engineer. So I didn't know if there's certain things that have to be stamped by engineers. But like a SWIP can only be prepared by a PE or an RLA. Okay. But. Okay. All right. Um, and you're going to be checking it anyway. Okay. As well as DOT. Okay. Uh, we talk lighting you brought up. Just make sure I don't miss any comments. Up angled limits of disturbance. Go to Karen. It'll go to Dave. And then eventually, once the site plan is a little bit more settled, we'll get the design of the buildings. Okay. Those were my comments. Circle back. Has this been sent out for two thirds of the It ha I don't think it has. I think it went out for the lead agency circulation, okay. not 239 yet. No, they'll they'll want to look at the details of the building, other stuff, so it'd be good to send, when you get that in, that we send it off for GML review. Your, your permitted use, so you're only requiring your site plan. Um, I have, well, you know, we can work with that. Uh, it's not a problem at all to wait for the GML review, but definitely DOT referral is on our mind quite a bit. So I like to get that verified. I'll look in the morning. So you'll work up with, okay, yeah. Because I think that, you know, and, and again, I think finding out if that's a wetland or not, you're going to have to get that going right away. Because if it is a wetland, that's going to be a big permit. Or potentially big permit, not a not a nationwide like a like an individual. So I think that will be important to get Tom, uh, Dave Tompkins out. Right. Um, so, so I just have a note. So the 239 will be subject to receipt of the architectural renderings. Yeah. Okay. I know sometimes planning likes to look at all the elements. Uh, but we can this evening um, declare ourselves lead agency. So. Um, I'll make a motion uh, that the Monroe Planning Board uh, be officially designated the lead agency. May I have a second? I'll second that. Uh, Jeff seconded it. Noreen? Jason Sorensky? Aye. Annie Franson? Aye. Jeff Manson? Aye. Nick Napoli? Aye. I think I did it wrong again. You all? So the application remains incomplete. And I think the next steps would definitely be to um, get back to DOT or, or start that dialogue with DOT because I think before anything else happens, that's pretty critical. And then the wetland question. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right? Thank you very much, board. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is Golden Delight Bakery, uh, 31 Larkin Drive. Come on up. <laughs> Good evening. Don Queen from Philly, applicant. We were last before you quite some time ago um, with the beginnings of a site plan for the property located at 31 Larkin Drive, which is an existing commercial uh, building that has um, several different uses in the building. Um, since that time, we have finished our survey, finished our property lines, our easements, our topo, um, and that is the map that we provided you for tonight's meeting. Uh, I do know that th there still is a, a list of items that I need to prepare and provide the board uh, to continue this uh, application forward. Uh, we're in the midst of doing that. We're finishing up the internal floor plans so that we can get that list of users and their square footages uh, on this map. Um, 
Also, at the time of the survey, it was snow covered in some areas, so we've got to go back out and re-verify some, some uh, striping and some parking arrangements that are currently on the site. Um, I owe the board a narrative about what's going on. So we do have some work to do. It's been a while, so we finished this map, and I got it into the board to, to let you know that we, we didn't disappear. Um, it was really on, on my end, not the applicant's end. So we are back now that you'll have to put up with us for a little while longer, and um, we'll get a site plan uh, together and, and working forward. I want to go over a few items. There are, there are five tenants in the building. The, the building is approximately 11,700 square feet. It is in the LI zone. Um, total property is about five, a little shy of five and a half acres. Uh, we're utilizing probably half that, and the other half is still vacant, uh, you know, open space there. Uh, one of Sean's comments was we need to provide the net area. I will do so. Um, just real quick, when in the back I was doing calculations if, with the easements. If I take those out automatically, we, we go down to about 3.4 acres. Um, we'll do the slope calculations, and there's also a drainage swale uh, coming from Route 17 you can kind of see on the topo on the back of the fence line. Uh, you can make it out. So Right along the fence going yeah, north-south? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're making those huge, you know, triangular points. Um, that does exist, and that is basically coming from... And if we have to subtract that out, we would. Um, but we're... Right now, we're well over the required two acres. Um, that's, that's necessary for it. With that, the bakery takes up about 9,000 square feet of the building. Okay, so it's about 70, 76% of that. Um, there is a landscaping business that has an office, and they also use the site for storage of materials and equipment. There is a small warehouse for an Amazon distributor of goods. There is a office furniture storage area, and then there is a plumber's warehouse in the building. Um, the Amazon store is about, or warehouse is about 1,100 square feet. Um, the office furniture warehouse is about 600 square feet, and the plumber is about 400. How much was the landscaper? The landscaper's office is about 300 square feet, somewhere in that range. We're still getting the detailed floor plans, but that's about the breakdown of it. Okay. There are two easements on the property. Um, there's one on the north, which is an Orange and Rockland utility easement. That, that parallels Route 17 and the Larkin Drive right away. And there is an easement on the south side of the property, which is a 50-foot right-of-way that provides potential access to two existing parcels farther down on Larkin Drive that are landlocked. So if you actually look at the location map, you can see the two parcels that don't have frontage on Larkin. So we, that right of way... So they go back? They, they're parallel with us. So they, they're paralleling 17. Paralleling 17, yeah. and okay. And there's, an, there's another parcel that is between them and Larkin Drive. Hmm. Okay. So that's what that right of way is, is serving. Undeveloped, right. um, but it exists. It'd have to go over that drainage area to, to right. get, yeah, if they were ever, ever developed. Or, you know, I don't know if who owns the parcel along Larkin. I don't know if it's, you know, common ownership or, or whatever. But so, so both of these easements are private? One is Orange and Rockland. Ro um, well, Orange and Rockland, right. Yeah. And then the other one's Th private? This one is private, yeah. Okay. It, the only reason I ask is because you ha there's material storage and other things going on in there, yes. but. So uh, I'll pull the, uh, we have the library page, we have the details of it, so okay. until I see the language of it, it's it's private easement to give them access to the back. Okay. And I guess until such time that they would ever go to construct that, um, that would have to be moved. Honey, I think you though need to take that into account in you know, planning the site plan. Because that could, you know, with easements like this, that are the access easements, 
although you're allowed to encroach upon that, you can't encroach upon it, and this is just from a private point of view, not the planning board's issue, but um, to an extent that it's gonna substantially interfere with it. I think if you have this storage yard there, arguably it's gonna be sub um, substantially interfering with it. And as John said, well, we'll just move it at that time. Well, then uh, I think you either need to move it now or provide a space where it can be moved so that the site plan itself can accommodate that in the future. Yeah, I mean, depending on what the structures are, some are more permanent than others, so, but, but if we're doing the overall planning long term, we need, I, we need to count for where that could be moved to, as you said. Just maybe some shadow storage area that, mm -hmm. like you have st shadow parking, that if you need to do it, you go ahead and, and have it at that time. Anything else? No, not at this time. Um, we're we're into this now, so we're going to be getting a more, much more information together. Okay. Um, and so, um, are we at this point with the site plan memorial, memorializing the uses, or was there any intent to change some of the uses, add uses, or just get the site cleaned up? I think it was get the site cleaned up. I don't think the property ever had a formal site plan approval. Okay. I think uh, based on building department records. So this is, I guess, the formal process to memorialize what's there okay. and clean up any, you know, violations or whatever else may exist, like the sheds in the front yard. Site plan. And probably the most important question before we get to Sean is this is a famous bakery, um, according to Google. So, so I'd like to know why it's so famous <laughs> and what we're missing out on. <laughs> 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 I don't I think you have to bring samples for, to the planning board that's, that's a requirement otherwise I, we can't call it famous <laughs> I think I think the Google marketing exactly worked then <laughs> <laughs> it has all right so with that Sean do you want to start sure um, so uh, to the use point you know obviously there are no uses memorialized on the plan so without those it was hard to perform a review since you know we don't know if there was permitted or any special use permits required for the site there, but i believe the contractor yard does require a special use permit correct based what i went through everything's permitted except for the, the landscaping right out the, the storage and stuff okay yeah um talk about the right of ways um the i, I just wanted to note um, that the general note seven identifies a well and septic, uh, excuse me, notes eight, uh, seven and eight note, note uh, well and septic for the site. I didn't see those noted on the plan, but I wanted to note that there was sewer, it looks like pretty close to the site. Um, yeah, so the applicant just informed me that he has water from the village of KJ. Oh, okay. So yes, so that is indeed um, already existing. Site is currently serviced by a septic system. Okay. So the water from from the village that's by outside user agreement. Part of the old country. Oh, so that old country road is now a water district. So is it an outside user district? I'll find out. User? I mean, I just sure. learned this you know, half an hour ago. So. <laughs> so so we'll need to find out. So it seems to be on some central sewer, a central water. It's coming from KJ, but is it via outside user or part of a district? Right. Or Okay. Got it. So it, you know, I just wanted to point out that there's also sewer available if the applicant wanted to connect to that. Is that an active line in Larkin that far up? Do you know? Not to my knowledge, but it's on your... <laughs> <laughs> Surveyors questioned it uh, whether it was okay. actually live, but yeah, I mean, if we can get sewer, that would be great. <laughs> where, where, just real quick, where is your septic if you're on septic? Um, you see where there's two manholes up in the north uh, western yep. corner of the building. That's the septic tank, and there's a small pump chamber, and then the field is probably 50 feet, you know, towards the left. Toward the left. Where the power lines are. Okay. It sits, it sits somewhere right in there. Right of way? No, just south, of, basically right directly across where the label for manholes or concrete walk is. Go west. 
So there's some overhead lines there, kind of under the overhead lines? Correct. Yeah, there's, there's lines from a utility pole on Larkin that are going up, and the other one is, is going servicing the building. Okay. So we'll show where the field is at some point. Yeah, we'll get an approximate location, but it's, it's right generally in that location. Okay. Um, general, four, general Note 14 references a subdivision plan. I, I know at one time there was talk of a subdivision for the rear part, but... Uh, it's not part of it. Okay. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you, you had spoke about the, the uh, narrative to be prepared, and then uh, we also, you noted the, the sheds and the trailers in the front. Obviously, those will have to be rearranged uh, elsewhere on the site. And that's all I had at this point. Thank you. Rick, do you have any comments? The only additional comment I have is, um, are you claiming that there are any pre-existing legal nonconformities with respect to the various structures? Or you, in a, some of these structures don't seem like they comply with the code, right, as to their location. So it's either going to be moved to be complying with that, or I'm asking if you think that they're somehow protected by... No, they, that, they, will, they will be moved. They will be moved, okay. I have nothing further. Than. Thank you. So they'll be moved, you said? Yes. Okay. I believe that's part of, the, part of the requirements from the building inspector as well. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Was this was this a was there a violation or was just to come in and get? It was a violation. There was all right. I couldn't recall. So this is to clean up the violation. Correct and officially get a site plan approved. So okay, yes. thank you. Um, so we'll open it up to the planning board. I'll start on this side. Uh, Nick, you probably have not had an opportunity to review this, but do you have any questions you want to ask of the applicant? Uh, nothing at this time. Thank you. Uh, Jeff? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Yeah, I have nothing at this time. And I don't either at this point, because I think you're getting more information. Yes. And yes. narrative, et cetera. So... Um, I don't know that we've done anything at this point as far as seeker or, and, and I think it might be still premature until we get the narrative and, and get more information. Uh, so let's see what the next submission is. Um, I want to confirm, we did a short form. Mm -hmm. Do you want a long form? A, well, a long form isn't required if you're not close to. I know some applications you've asked and we've just provided it, others we yeah. haven't, so. Um, I don't know. Does anybody feel strongly about a long form? Sometimes it gives you more information. I always think that it gives you a lot more information so that the planning board will have that to base other decisions on. Right. I, I don't think it's that much additional site like this. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that. So, uh, so then let's do a part one fully AF. Uh, because it is a large site, and it'll just be useful for if things are going to move around or for the future, yeah, having the information. No problem. Okay. Thank you. So we'll do an FEIF. F -E -A -F. I'm very nervous if you're saying FEIF. <laughs> 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 this planner's just default to EIS. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think that's it for this evening. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, coming back in. We look forward to moving this uh, forward. Thank you for your patience. Sure. Um, just remember if there's any s individual standards for contractor's yard that we need to you know, meet those requirements or show where there might be variances and or pre-existing. Okay. So um, in the narrative, maybe you could touch upon that. Okay. Well All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So at this point, we just have minutes. Um, does uh, Sean or Rick, is there anything we need to bring up or address or that you want to mention? Or Just one thing. I, I, got, I received an email from Rhonda, sorry, I'm forgetting her last name, from Leonard Jackson Associates regarding Bald Hill yesterday. Okay. 
she wanted me to follow up or to review, con or I should say continue the review of the conditions of approval that were granted a number of years ago. For so, Bald Hill, which I think there's a stipulation of settlement on correct. that one. Okay. So I just wanted to confirm that we're okay to look at that file and see what's outstanding with regards to that. Have they, do they have an escrow account, Bald Hill? Yeah, let's just make sure that there's enough escrow. I don't know how long your review is going to take, but we want to make sure it's covered, and Ashley or someone else may need to also be involved. So, yeah, let's just look into the escrow. I don't have an, um, a concern about you reviewing it. Okay. Because I guess at some point they'll be coming in. They're under well, construction. They're conditionally, I believe they're conditionally approved, so okay. they may not okay. have to come in. All right. I wasn't sure if they were reviewing just because they might have to come back in for some reason, but maybe not. Kind of went dormant for a while, and okay. then she, she just happened to reach out to me. So Okay. Um, real quick, I forgot to mention for um, the 17M project, I'd be curious also to know in deeds or in information, is that swale or any piece of it within an easement? Um, I don't know that there should be, but I'm just curious whether anyone may have rights to it. And I think it just, I guess I'm just thinking of it because there's a pond and it's flowing from the pond and I don't know if someone at once upon a time had an easement to clean it out or to do anything to it. So does anyone control it? I think the best thing is to ask the applicant to provide all easements on the property, okay. including um, that stream. Okay. Uh, we can reach out to, to David if you want me to. That'd be great. I'd okay. appreciate it. All right. Uh, so with that, I think we only have minutes. We don't have a quorum for the minutes. So uh, what happens, I guess we we don't necessarily approve minutes if we never have a quorum. And the reason I'm saying it, that is that we have three members that we've been reduced by. Um, Nick is new, so there may be some minutes that we're just not going to have a quorum. Do we let them stay draft? Uh, there's no real rule on it. And so I'll tell you what I do with other boards, and I run into this from time to time for transitions from board members and things. <coughs> Excuse me. So first of all, minutes don't have to be approved legally. And so the fact that they aren't approved by you um, wouldn't, that's fine. They'll just be the minutes. Um, I think a better practice is to actually have less than a quorum vote on it. It's not truly a vote because it's not a quorum but at least you have that best practice of at least some of you are looked at it and said, yes, this seems accurate to us. Since there's no requirement to do it by a, a quorum, you're really not missing anything by doing it less than a quorum. And I think if you don't do it, then it sort of doesn't get the review it needs. So I think uh, if you have less than a quorum and you're not gonna get a quorum, then I think you, you look at it, make any changes that you want, and those will be considered the, the approved minutes even though it's not approved by a quorum. Yeah, I thought there was something or somewhere that I had heard that as long as the individual had read the record or that they had some knowledge of it, even though there wasn't a quorum, you could still... If they, for instance, if they listen to the... If somebody listened to the recording, mm -hmm. if you listen to the recording, Nick, and then looked at the minutes, you could say, yes, I believe these are accurate or there needs to be a change in it. So that could happen as well. All right. Um, let's hold off. And uh, we'll take it up, not at the next meeting, because I think we're going to be very busy at the next meeting. So with regard to the next meet, so we're going to hold off on the minutes. Um, that'll give you a chance to take a look at it if you'd like to. Um, the, Nick would have to actually listen to the recording. The recording, correct. And, if, and then determine for yourself whether or not they're accurate or need changes, and that would be entirely appropriate. Right. Um, and you don't have to, but if you want to. Um, BJ's... Because we didn't have a quorum this evening, uh, because Jeff normally has to recuse himself uh, on the BJ, oh, 